Hello guys and welcome to this video to talk about these two very interesting cases okay one at the top one at the bottom and then uh, this video is of course about clinical diagnosis of caries so sometimes we find arrested caries you know the darker ones sometimes we find the active lesions which are softer and the color is a little bit lighter so we are going to talk about these characteristics very soon and then uh, failing restorations, different types of restorations, and then we need to know where to act and when to act, okay? So let's start without further ado uh, with the case on, on the top of your screen, of course. So those two images that we are seeing are, are from the same case, the two images at the top. And then we are seeing a lot of things that uh, should be diagnosed first, right? So feel free to pause the video and try by yourself to diagnose all the conditions here. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys that, you know, so, uh, some more information. So uh, the, uh, this is an elderly patient, male patient, and then um, this is uh, that there is a removable prosthesis right in the upper arch. So and after telling you guys this, maybe you guys are realizing that this removable prosthesis is also causing problems here, right? So uh, anyway, let's start to, to talk about these alterations. So here we can see that we have a lack of vertical dimension. There is bruxism, you know, very hard bruxism. And, and you know, take a look at this. So we can even see the, you know, the root canal in the poop chamber. So the, this poop chamber should be atrophic, you know, as much as it could be. Then the upper molar here is over erupted, of course. And then two smaller crowns were made here to rehabilitate. Of course, the curve of speed is not the same because uh, ideally we should re uh, decrease the height of this upper molar and then make uh, longer crowns for the upper arch. Okay, so of course this is just a picture, but I'm telling you guys also my clinical observations of the case. Okay, so then there is a preparation, there was temporary crown, now we need to take a decision whether or not to make the final crown. And then we first need, of course, to diagnose all these issues here. Okay, so we have this cervical lesion, of course, this is now a failing restoration. We have even this terrible black space here, okay? I'm talking about uh, on the right side of this image, of course. And then uh, these uh, lesions, okay, cervical lesions, all this, this uh, damage due to bruxism, and of course, this should be included on the planning. But of course, posterior support should, uh, should be there. We should have posterior teeth, protecting anterior teeth ideally but then we have this situation here okay so this was actually done it's a damage done by a clamp of a, of a removable prosthesis and now you have this situation with arrested caries okay so of course you need to do something about this tooth here when we see the occlusal uh, aspect then this was before removing the temporary crown of course then you guys can see that the restoration is a failing restoration. So here we have arrested caries, okay, even with this failure of the restoration, then active lesions as well here and here. So the active lesions were softer, they are lighter, okay. Just for us to take a, a, to talk about these differences, the, usually the arrested caries are less painful, okay, than the active uh, lesions and they are mostly found in elderly patients, the arrested caries, okay? Whereas the active lesions are mostly found, of course, in younger patients. So take uh, in consideration all this information in your diagnosis, okay? Because that's coming from, the, from this uh, article that I am recommending here for you guys. So that's the recommended reference of today, a very nice article, okay? Published in the Community Dental and Oral Epidemiology Journal. Uh, then we have uh, the progress. So uh, the active lesions, they progress so much faster, of course, and the arrested lesions, they progress so much slowly, so much slower, okay? So we also need to consider this. Uh, the dentin uh, underneath the active lesion is usually painful and decalcified, whereas the dentin below arrested caries is usually sclerotic and pigmented, okay? So those are important differences. Uh, if you need, go back to, to uh, understand these concepts again. But uh, let's also talk about, um, well, well, okay, and there is also the need of this whole rehabilitation to, to be improved with uh, the vertical dimension should be also increased. 
But anyway, uh, oral rehabilitation videos will come soon to talk about cases like this. Okay, if here we are talking about mostly the diagnosis. Okay, even a failing restoration here at the corner of this screen. Okay, the cervical lesions. And so we, we should all, always, uh, you know, always these failing restorations here as well. So we should always diagnose all of them. Now we go to the case on the uh, the bottom of your screen and then take a look at this. So let's talk about this molar. Okay, we have also these pigmentations here. We should always use the ICDAS classification. If you guys don't remember how to use the classification or how to diagnose caries or how to differentiate caries from dentin, I'm going to add the link of the previous videos of caries on the top right corner of this screen. It will show up here on the top right corner of this screen. You guys can just click on it, okay? So assess this content as well here uh, in the channel. So now talking about this first molar here. So this was the situation before on the radiograph. Uh, the, the, of course, the, the restoration was bigger, the amalgam restoration, and then this restoration was changed by a resin restoration, okay? So the patient brought this radiograph from before. And then take a look at this. We have now the restoration, the last restoration performed by the other professional with, uh, you know, with this interface between resin and amalgam. And we know that this is not the ideal situation, right? So should we do something here? Well, of course, right? Because even clinically, we can see the lack of adaptation of this restoration, okay? Pigmentation here, okay, in the palatal sulcus, okay, the palatal fissure. And then we have um, all these aspects here, pigmentations, staining of this resin restoration. Okay, but on, of course, on top of that, we have also this radiolucency here. Okay, underneath the uh, amalgam restoration, the distal side of the amalgam restoration, which is still here. Okay, so this radiograph is pretty much justifying uh, the situation that we are seeing here. And then ideally, you would, of course, do a very nice class 2 restoration, okay, or a mesioclusal distal with uh, the same material, of course. Uh, we have the pulp chamber being atrophic here, okay, so most likely we would find uh, sclerotic dentin, the tertiary dentin, which is the one that comes due to reaction, due to, due to damage, as a response to damage. And then uh, maybe you could use a lining material to protect the pulp chamber, but uh, you would do a very nice uh, restoration. Okay, so mesial occlusal distal restoration. Could we do a crown here? Well, that's of course one of the options, but then we have also periodontal ligament space widening, so you would assess, of course, the conditions of the vitality of this tooth to make sure that you don't need a root canal treatment uh, before the crown, and that's actually what happens usually, right? So, uh, again, uh, pay attention to the diagnosis of, of uh, arrested caries. There are some articles, including this review, uh, with a decision tree of which uh, arrested caries we should act and which ones we could actually leave or leave part of the uh, infected dentin or affected dentin. Okay, this is also being commented by one of my previous videos. Uh, so, use literature to decide on uh, uh, which treatments you should offer to your patients, but then, of course, make sure you are able to diagnose all these alterations uh, of existing restorations and active lesions of your patients, all right? So if you guys like, please hit the like button. Don't forget to share this video to support this YouTube channel and see you guys in the next videos.